Hey guys, welcome to another video of mine on this really cool DIY channel video Epo where we get to make something and we have fun. In this video, I'm going to experiment with these paper briquettes and see if they can sustain fire good enough to cook something. There are so many videos on the internet on how to make these paper briquettes and each have their own methods. Please watch them too if you're looking at some better ideas on how to make these. First, I'm going to show you how I make these and I've already made a few. Note that this is not a weekend project because it might take more than a week for these briquettes to dry. It really depends upon the weather conditions of the place that you stay. I've not tested these briquettes yet. I'm going to do that in front of the camera just for you guys. Before doing that, let me ask you to subscribe to my channel video Epo. I believe my videos are getting better at quality every time. So please take a moment and clicking that subscribe icon now. So please do it. It should be somewhere here. To make this, I'm going to need some assistance and the kids are helping me with some newspapers. Next, we fill the container with water. Just half the container will do. Now the kids love this next step. It's all about tearing papers and dumping it into the container filled with water. I can see very clearly why their notebooks wouldn't come intact back from their classes. Their teachers must have a really bad time. After a point of time, they got bored and I let them go. In order to shred the papers without a paper shredder, I figured out the most easiest and the cheapest way. I have collected some used razor blades of mine, which can still be used to cut papers. A small bolt can slide in through the holes in most of these razors. I marked and cut thin pieces of wood, made holes and stacked the blades sandwiching in between the wood. The blade has four corners which can cut and when one goes blunt, it can be flipped to the other side by removing the bolt and repeating the process. By repeatedly scoring on the paper with this jig, we can shred the papers into thin strips. Note that this step is not for kids, razor blades are very sharp, so please be cautious. Once all of the shredded papers were put in the water, I covered the container with a lid because I did not want insects to be swarming around in it the next time I opened it. After this step, you might have to leave it for a couple of days or even more. But I've noticed that newspapers are too thin and can be worked with just after soaking a few hours. Leaving it for more days does not really matter unless and until you want to churn it out with some kind of a tool. I'm going to use my drilling machine and saw blades to do this. For this purpose, I made another jig. An old saw blade was fit to a thread rod with suitable washers and coupling nuts. This was then fit into a drilling machine. You could always throw this in a blender or a floor grinder, but let me tell you that this is a lot less messy. I had transferred the content into a bucket to work with, then started churning it with my jig to turn it into a pulp. It only took a few minutes for me, but it really depends on the consistency that you desire. Now this pulp can be used to make a lot of things, which we shall experiment with later. Now if you squeeze the pulp, it forms and stays into the shape it's compressed. This is an indication that it's ready. Now the pulp is ready, now we have to convert this pulp into briquettes. For which I'm going to use a tool, which is used in the kitchen. It looks something like this. Now there's going to be a plate in here. This lid goes on top like this. And then when you start, Threading it. The flour comes out of these plates which is going to be placed in here. Let me show it to you. Let me quickly demonstrate it to you by filling it with some flour. It's already got the plates inside. Now let's put the lid on and start threading it. Now you can see the noodles coming out of it. I guess I've used the plate with a bigger hole, so let me try it with the plate with the smaller holes. I think this size is ideal for making noodles. Now this way you can make fresh noodles and it's just gonna take a little bit of more time, maybe 20 minutes or a little bit more. It's a lot healthier, tastier and note this guys, it's got no preservatives at all. So you've seen how this tool is used in the kitchen. I'll be using this small plate with tiny perforations so that it might help the water to come out of it. So let's start doing this. I begin by inserting the plate inside the cylinder and then grab a handful of the paper pulp which we have made earlier and start filling it up in the cylinder.
Note that the threading part is clear from any sort of paper or dirt because with this if you put the lid on it will be very difficult to take it off later. Now let's put the lid on and start threading it. Once the liver is getting pushed inside, the content inside is getting compressed, letting the water outside. However, the water is not getting flushed out from the bottom as I thought. I have added another plate on top of the cylinder to make it a little bit more stronger. And this cannot be threaded too tightly because it's doing something which it is not made for. I found out that there is no way for the water to come out except for the bottom and when I open the lid you can see it comes out from the top as well. But I think we can work with this for now. Now to get the briquettes out I laid on a sheet of newspaper and by using a dowel and placing it on top of the cylinder I pushed the cylinder upwards and we have a lovely nice briquette. Let me just take off these plates. It's too wet. So it has to be dried for a week or so. Note that these plates are not very strong and they can bend very easily but I was using 3 or 4 plates at a time and that saved it from damage and that is something that you need to consider. Now comes the moment of truth, let's make fire and cook something. I dug a tiny pit and I placed 3 rocks next to it. Here is a quick tip on how to level the rocks for it to accommodate a container on top of it. I begin by placing the container on top of it. And by using the mud we scooped out earlier, I leveled the rocks. And then when I place the frying pan, it kind of sits on it perfectly. Now the briquettes wouldn't catch fire so easily so I am using some twigs and some dry leaves to start the fire. Adding a paper makes the job a lot more easier. Once these catch fire, I started dropping the briquettes one by one. As the fire caught up, I placed the pan on top of it and went for a quick hand wash and picked up some eggs while I came back. By the time the pan is getting heated up, let me tell you something. In my country, if you see that the egg is sharp and pointy like this, it means it will yield a male and if it is round like this, it will yield a female. That's what they say. I don't know how far that is true. Let's see if I can cook something. Each and every time the fire went off, I used the PVC pipe to blow air in through it and it would catch up. The omelette is cooking good and I am sprinkling some salt for taste. Now the egg is cooked and I am going to transfer it to another plate. And the next most important thing is to put the fire off and we do so by simply using the mud we had taken out from the pit. So we have come to the end of the video. I wanted to test if the paper briquettes could actually help us cook something and they really did. Now the point that I have noted is that the paper briquettes are not able to support themselves. I don't know if it is my fault or the way I made it but that's what I found. But still, I was able to cook an omelette and I'm gonna have my time. So I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Until then, bye. It's good.